The Kaizen condensation provides a powerful way to make larger, more complicated molecules out of small, fairly simple molecules. You can take an ester that's easy to make or you can even buy, treat it with ethoxide, and out pops a molecule that has a new carbon-carbon bond, has a ketone and an ester as functionality, and substitution at a couple different carbons. I encourage students to put boxes around two carbons in the starting material and four carbons in the product just to keep track of exactly what's happening. In the starting material, you always have an ester and a CH2 attached to it. And in the product, you always have four carbons. It's the one and the three carbons that have functional groups. And two and four have substituents that are always the same. They must be the same. This can be useful, but it also can be limiting. Wouldn't it be great if you could do the same chemistry, but have control over what the substituents are? One be one thing and the other be a different thing. Well, if we put two different esters together, you could picture a condensation that gives you differential substitution. Take a look. I picture two different esters. The substituents attached to the alpha carbon are different colors just to distinguish them. And let's say we'd like to have the pattern that I've shown here in the product. So the brown one would be the enolate, adding to the top one that carbonyl ends up as the ketone. So when we put our box around the structure, we have our four carbons, and we have the tan R at the two carbon and the blue R at the four carbon. Looks good, but there's nothing that stops the top one from being the enolate, adding to the bottom one. So wait a minute, we should think about two products. And now you see that we have two different patterns for the substitution, where the blue substituent is and where the tan substituent is. This would make a mixture of two different products, it would greatly reduce the yields that we would get of the one we wanted, and it would be hard to purify what we wanted. But have you already thought of this? It's worse than that. When the top one is the enolate, it could add to a molecule of itself, and when the bottom one is an enolate, it could add to a molecule itself. So there really are four products, not two. And these have four different patterns for differential substitution. This would be an impossible mixture, and we'd have very low yields of what we wanted. Sad but true. However, there are structural pairs that can be used together to do what we call a crossed glycine condensation. It's also referred to as a mixed glycine condensation because it's a mixture of two different esters. What we'll need is one of the ester partners having no alpha hydrogens and readily adding nucleophiles. It needs to add nucleophiles better than the other one. There are pairs that do this, and it turns out they can be very useful. Take a look at these. The ester on the right has alpha hydrogens. This has no alpha hydrogens. Furthermore, the ester on the left has a very small group attached to it. It's hydrogen. So it undergoes nucleophilic addition very readily. So when we treat this pair with ethoxide, we get a good yield of a beta keto ester. And this beta keto ester is different. It has different substitution, a methyl on the two carbon, and a hydrogen attached to the ketone carbonyl, directly to the ketone carbonyl. Notice in this crossed Kleisen condensation, I put a box around three carbons, not four. This is a very big difference. You'll always have these three carbons in the product of a crossed Kleisen. The ester, and on the beta carbon, the ketone. In between, there'll be a carbon that has a substituent, or two hydrogens. Let's look at another example. This is a similar pair, isn't it? Again, the ester on the right has two alpha hydrogens, and the ester on the left has no alpha hydrogens. Instead of the hydrogen up above attached to the carbonyl, it has an ethoxy group. So when we treat this with base, we get an altogether different product. It has the same carbons in the box, it has a methyl group on the two carbon, but now it has an ethoxy group, so this is a diester. And finally, ethyl benzoate is another common reacting partner. Ethyl benzoate has no alpha hydrogens, and for some reason, the phenyl ring promotes nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl. I don't want to go into the details about that, but it relates to the fact that the phenyl group has a pi system that can interact with the pi system of the carbonyl as the addition is happening. In any case, when the ethyl benzoate is treated together with another ester with base, out pops a structure like this. Again, it's a beta-ketoester. We have the same three carbons in the box. 
On the two carbon, we have a methyl group, and directly attached to the ketone, we have a phenyl group. These are three of the very most common reacting partners we have. Now there's this, another synthetic approach that I'd like to tell you about that lets you make the very same kind of cross kaizen products that you see here. It's called a directed kaizen condensation. And it's directed because you focus first on just one reacting partner and make the enolate from it and then direct reaction to a different ester. Using LDA at very low temperatures, you can quantitatively remove one of the alpha hydrogens. This lets you make an enolate and have it in the reaction flask by itself. It has a negative charge on carbon, it has an unshared pair of electrons, and it's a very good nucleophile. At this point, you can add another ester. I'm showing you ethyl propionate as an example. And now this enolate can add to the carbonyl like we're used to seeing for clysins, which will lead to loss of the ethoxy group and form a product that looks just like those cross clysin products. Again, we can put three carbons in the box. We have a beta keto ester, and we have something different attached to the two carbon and the ketone. The number two carbon, what we would call alpha carbon, is unsubstituted because we started with ethyl acetate. We have three hydrogens at this carbon. And the other ester reactant has two carbons attached directly to the ester carbonyl. So there are two carbons here that are outside the box. This is an ethyl group that's attached directly to the ketone. So using these approaches, cross kleisen condensations work well. They let you make a structure pattern that I've shown you in the box. There are always three carbons. It's a beta keto ester. You can have differential substitution at the two position and the group attached to the carbonyl.